Computers allow us to pretty much do anything and we use them all the time. Yet the way in which they function is unknown to most. This video aims to explain what computers are at the most fundamental level. The building blocks of computers are called transistors. Basically, a transistor has two functions, to amplify power or to redirect it. They're made out of silicon. Silicon is not even a real conductor of electricity, it's a semiconductor. Processors get hot under load and silicon can sustain that heat, which is why it was chosen. You can add chemicals to it in order to give it or take away more electrons. Electrons are charged negatively, so silicon with more electrons is called n-type, and p-type silicon doesn't have electrons but can attract them more easily. The combination of these two types of silicon allow you to make all kinds of advanced electronics with this as the building block. As you put more transistors together, you can make something called a logic gate. A logic gate is the basis through which decisions are made in a computer. It utilizes something called Boolean algebra, where there are only two outputs. More complex transistor circuits use a special type of transistor called a junction transistor, which can stay on even when the base current goes away. This allows it to store its on status or off status for longer periods of time until the new base current flows through it. This is how memory works at its core. You may have noticed that the building blocks of computers are actually just little devices which can really only be on or off. Two states. That's why binary exists. A, nu a numerical system which can work with two-way devices was required. Just like our regular decimal system has 10 unique digits, binary has two, zero and one. Let's take the number 72, for example. If you divide it by two until zero becomes the quotient and write the remainder for each of those divisions backwards, you'll get the number in binary, which is 1001000. With regards to transistors, zero is off and one is on. You could have seven transistors all next to each other and turn some on and some off to express any number as long as it's seven digits or less in binary, since you have seven transistors. Each transistor is called a bit. Eight of these become bytes, and that's what all files in your computer are stored with. These bits become useful when considering operations. An operation can be thought of as any utilization of bits that outputs something. Your computer computes things like this. It can get really complex, but we can look at a simple one called an adder. An adder is a simple component of a processor which can add two numbers together. Basically, it sums the signals that its transistors receive. Because of binary, this can actually result in adding numbers. The robustness of an adder would depend on how many bits it has, which would then change the number of transistors involved in it. Most adders are much larger than what we're showing in this image, but the key takeaway here is that at their very core, computers are hardwired. They don't logically think. You may be thinking that computer hardware is only robust enough to add two things. It may appear this way, but actually it isn't. Each processor in a computer has a program called microphone, I mean, sorry, microcode directly on the chip. This interprets machine instructions into hardware signals that I just explained. The machine language that it receives is unique to each CPU, but it all comes from a compiler which takes the code that your application or game is written in and converts it into machine language. It's with this absolute nature, without thinking, that everything surrounding computers are built upon.